What's up everybody? One of the problems that I see students have is they're able to solve problems with numbers, but then they have troubles with just answering in terms of variables. So that's what we're going to look at today. In this question, we want your answer to only be in two possible variables, either V or A or both. So when you look at your answer, just make sure that you're writing it in those terms. So as always, we're just going to set these up the same way where we're going to um, draw, sketch a picture first. So we have a car moving, has a velocity V, right? And it's going to slam on the brakes and stop over here. Okay, it's going to cover some distance, obviously. It's going to take some period of time. And it's going to decelerate. So if we're going to the right, with eastward velocity, if we want to slow down and stop, we must be going to the left with westward acceleration. So we'll set this up the same. We'll go ahead and write our givens out. But this time, instead of writing actual numbers, we'll just leave it in variable terms. So for instance, here's V initial. We'll just call that V. Acceleration, we'll just call this A. Now it is going backwards. So we'll go call it negative A. Since this was to the east, that's positive, and acceleration is to the left, we'll make that negative. Um, distance, or delta D, we'll just leave that in terms of, well, we can leave it as delta D or D. And time, we can leave that as T. And the only last thing we have is V final. Now, since we actually know the value of this, since it says that it stops, we do know the value for that. So we can go ahead and plug in a number there, since that is going to be zero. Okay, and then you just, as usual, you see if you can set this up and solve it. So the first question is asking for time. So you look at your set of equations, you decide which one's going to work for you. In this case, VF equals VO plus AT. Now you just assume like the variables you know, those are like your given values. So we know this one, we know velocity, we know acceleration, and we know V final. These are the two kind of unknowns here distance and time. The ones that are given to you, these variables given to you to us, those you can think of as the ones that you know. And then you just do algebra, that's it. So for example, in this case, you just go ahead and subtract, um, actually V final is zero, right? So we can just go ahead and plug that in. So we got zero equals VO plus negative AT. And we solve for T. So T equals VO, remember VO, we can just simply call V. So that's going to be V, negative V over negative A. Okay, or positive over positive. And that's it. That would be our answer. You do want to always look back and see, okay, does that cover the variables that I, um, were, that I wanted? So they wanted V, they wanted A, and we're good to go. We're done. So let's go ahead and solve for B. Uh, B says, now we're looking for how far will it travel? So that's going to be a distance here. Let's use a different color. Um, so again, you look at your equations. We do know a, a third um, variable. We know time here. So let's say, for example, you do this. I'm going to do probably what I would normally wouldn't do, but I'm just going to want to show you what might happen if you do it this way. So you go VO plus VF over 2 times time. And VO is V, and VF we know is going to be 0. So what you're left with is delta D equals VO over 2 times time. Now here's the problem. A lot of students would just stop there. They would say, okay, that's my answer. The issue with this is they want, all, want your answers to be in terms of V or A. We do have our V here, but we also have a time here. So if this happens to you, you're not like out of luck. What you would do is you take, we've solved for time already. You're just going to go ahead and substitute that time into here. So notice what we're going to get then is delta D equals VO over 2. And then we multiply it by this time that we had before. Actually, VO, I really should be calling that V. So that's going to be V over 2. And then we have V over A. And what you're left with is V squared over 2A. And that would be my solution. So again, my answer should only be in terms of the variables that were given, in this case, V, O, and A. And we have V and A. So as I mentioned, I probably would not have done it this way. I would have looked for a more direct way to solve this. 
So again, if you imagine V we were given, A we were given, VF we were given, and we're looking now for distance. So I would have chosen the equation that has those four variables. So in that case, the equation is VF squared equals VO squared plus 2AD. Okay, and then when you do the algebra, again, this is zero, and we'll do the algebra, and notice you're just going to get the exact same thing, where you're going to get your distance. Displacement is equal to VO squared over 2A. You get the same answer. You just kind of save yourself a step. So the last question is asking, what happens if we double this initial velocity? So let me go ahead and clear the screen out. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this one up. Um, again, you can kind of just repeat, and instead of saying your car starts with uh, V, it starts with 2V. I actually think there's an easier way to do it. Recall that our time that we had before is equal to VO over A, right? And now we're just going to double it. So if we double this, let's call this, this T, T, 2X, well, that's going to be 2V over A. Well, what is that? Well, 2v over a, that's just 2 times v over a. So in other words, if you double the time, sorry, if you double the velocity, you would double the time. And conceptually, hopefully that makes sense. Notice that t is directly proportional to v, which means, if again, if you double the velocity here, then the time would also be 2 times as well. What about the distance? So this one's pretty straightforward. The distance, I would solve it the same exact way. So I would go back to that equation that I had before. So I have d equals v squared over 2a. So this time we are, again, doubling the velocity. So notice what's going to happen. When we plug in 2v, we're going to square that, right? So when we square that, we're going to end up with 2 squared, which is 4 times v squared over 2a. So in other words, just remember this was our original v squared over 2a, that was our original one. So this means it's going to be 4 times that original distance that we calculated. Again, we can do this just kind of with proportions as well. It's a little bit easier if you just say, well, delta d is proportional to v squared. And again, if I double that velocity, you're going to say delta d is proportional to 4 times d. So one implication of this is you as a new driver, you know that if you go faster, it's going to take you a longer time to stop and a longer distance to stop. What you might not know is that it takes you a lot longer, a lot farther distance to stop. In other words, if you were to double your velocity, as we're just seeing now, Doubling your velocity does not double the distance it takes to stop. It actually quadruples the distance to stop. So I've just shown you how this works mathematically. Let's try to think about it conceptually. So let me clear the screen out here. So let's imagine we have our car driving along. Let's just use numbers here to keep it simple. So we have 5 meters per second speed, and we want to stop. So we're going to stop right here, right? So this will be 0 meters per second. We're going to stop here. And this is the distance that it travels. Well, let's imagine we double the velocity. And let's say the distance would also double, just for conceptual sake. So let's say this is 10 meters per second over here. Well, notice what's going to happen. Because we're going faster, we're going to travel farther. Right? And this is essentially saying that when we double this velocity, we're going to travel that same amount of distance that we would if we were going from 5 to 0 is when we're going from 10 to 5. But this doesn't make sense because we're going faster, right? That means every second we should be traveling 10 meters instead of 5 meters. So we should actually be traveling a much greater distance than we are to go from 10 to 5, then to go from 5 to 0. In fact, as we just seen, we should be way back here. If we were to draw this out, way back here, this would be distance d, this would be distance d, this would be d. These are all supposed to be equal here. 
use your imagination. So this would be going from 5 to 0 meters per second, meters per second, 5 to 0. Way over here, since we're traveling faster, we're going to travel, in fact, three times the distance to go from 10 to 5 as we would to go from 5 to 0. And to go the, from 10 all the way to 0 would equal 4 times the distance. So again, key t takeaway as a new driver, when you go a little bit faster, it doesn't mean you have to stop a little bit farther. It means you have to stop a lot a bit farther. All right, let me know if you have any questions.